Watch and burn. Hey everyone. So tonight I want to discuss Clark's uh, EP or single for Growl's Garden off Totem's Flare. And that is this, you can't see it, this incredibly fun looking thing here. Yeah, actually, you know what just occurred to me? I'm not sure if this is an EP or if this is considered a single. Um, much like the Ted EP, which was clearly labeled an EP, there are a handful of extra songs on here that would suggest this is more of an EP than a single. The only song on here, of course, that is from Totem's Flare is Growl's Garden, the title track of the single that is also named Growl's Garden. Jesus, this is fucking going off the rails early, too. But other than, in addition to, sorry, Growl's Garden, we also have the Magnet Mine, Seaweed, Gonk Roughage, Gonk Roughage. Now, I don't even know what the fuck Gonk is. Roughage, I've always assumed meant like green vegetables, like lettuce or some shit. And then Distant Father Torch in Farewell Mining Town, which has the Warp Records label next to it. You can't really see that at all. No, you can't. See, I figure that the Warp Records label is beside the Farewell Mining Town because that's the only track on here that Warp approved and the rest were unapproved by Warp. That's my take on it. I'm sure that take is incredibly stupid and incredibly wrong, but I'm not willing to change course at this point. I'm too old. That's my opinion and I'm sticking with it. I do have to say, again, though, as a complete package that is initially, or, or initially, sorry, at least somewhat centered around the idea of one song from the full length, or from a full length, this plays out like its own release. This plays out like it's its own product, and it stands completely independent of Totem's Flare. Nothing on here necessarily sounds like Totem's Flare, even though I will argue everything from this era does sort of borrow from itself here and there in order to maintain that sense of consistency. So in that sense, this is Totem's Flare or, or Turning Dragon-ish. But I have to say Farewell Mining Town is on here, and that is one of the most... I don't know. It's such a... It just makes me feel so secure. It, it's like I'm off in some distant mining town. It's, it's almost in a sense like I'm Francis McDormand at the end of Nomad Land, Nomad, uh, Nomad Land when she is back at the, the town where her and her husband lived and worked. And it's kind of like right before she sort of breaks down and cries as she's looking around everywhere that they used to live and how the zip code has been completely wiped out because they shut, I can't remember where her and her husband used to work, but whatever it was, they shut it down. So everybody there worked wherever it was, they worked. So when it shut down, the town was wiped out. The entire zip code was gone. And at the end of the movie, it has her going back there and she's, becoming incredibly emotional, of course, because this is where she spent a huge chunk of her life with the man that she loved, who is now, who has since passed on. And that's, after seeing Nomadland, that's always what I picture in my head whenever I listen to Farewell Mining Town, is Frances McDormand at the end of Nomadland. But prior to that, that song used to give me such a, um, such a sense of belonging. I always used to feel really like, large and in charge whenever I had that song on. But then once I saw Nomadland a couple years ago, it's like the two got interlinked and I, I can't not see Frances McDormand crying at the end of that movie when I think about this song or when I hear this song now. Uh, God, that was an incredible movie. It was incredibly sad. And I, I didn't love how the movie suggested that Amazon was a good place to work because I know that certainly wasn't the intention uh, the author had when they wrote the book. Amazon's a horrible company to work for. That whole camper force thing's a fucking scam, too. Jesus Christ. But anyways, yeah, this, I don't know, his singles or his EPs, four songs from his full lengths at this point, they had so much personality standing on their own. It's like I said at the beginning of this, this thing could have been released completely. Had you removed Growl's Garden, this could have just been a whole other EP um, that, that Clark had just decided to release that, like I said, had absolutely nothing to do with the... Uh, Grouse Garden from Totem's Flare. But yeah, I love the artwork too. But yeah, look, I am going to go. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying anymore. I don't even know anymore. I'm completely lost. 
I've done so many of these, I feel like, oh, these aren't moving anymore. Get moving, guys. Get some movement going. Um, yeah, I've done so many of these. I just kind of feel lost at this point. Eh, whatever. Look, I'm going to go. So thanks so much, like always, for hanging out with me while I discuss Clark's single or EP for Growl's Garden. Like always, if you like this review, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. But most importantly, don't forget that you are amazing and that the world is a better place because you are in it. I'll see you guys soon. Have a good night. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.